heuristics, and that is a popular topic in psychology, an easy one to get all the different ones confused. So let's just dive in. So heuristics, those are the mental shortcuts. Okay, so you and I, we don't like doing a whole lot of thinking. If, you know, if we can avoid it, we'd rather just use some rule of thumb, something that would just kind of help us make the decision pretty quickly so that we can move on to something else. Mental shortcuts. So, uh, Darren, Simon, and Shelley sent me a few of them, and then I threw in one or two that I know are also usually on tests, and so you probably will have to know them at some point. So, let's take a look at them. The first one, I think probably not the hardest one to get among all those we have here, is availability. So, what does availability mean? Well, if you are trying to figure out uh, how often something happens, how often are there uh, airplane crashes. What's the likelihood of uh, you ge- being robbed? Well, availability means that you are probably going to turn to something you heard or saw on TV. All right, so let's bring up a TV set here. There we go. Whatever you see in the media, something dramatic that you saw recently, something you saw last night, something on the news. If you recently saw something dramatic like a, like a an airplane crash, then that is th- that image is available to you and it tends to jump right into your head and it becomes the basis upon which you make your decision. Probably a wrong one, right? Heuristics often lead us to the incorrect decision, not always, but uh, in this case, probably it will. So if you uh, have seen something on TV and that's the decision, or that's what you're going to use to make your decision, that's not so good. Probably you're wrong, but it's hard to know what the probabilities are, you know? So availability, watch out for that tendency to draw from what you recently saw. That's different from number two here, representativeness. I, there's, there's a word that you know just doesn't help you at all. But the idea here is that if you're trying to figure out what something is like, then you tend to think about things that you think represent the whole category. So this has a lot to do with uh, stereotyping. But for example, suppose that someone asked you about a fruit. You know, what's a fruit? Uh, well... Go with me. Here's my example. Now, would you uh, show them a tomato? Probably not, right? I mean, because not everybody is in agreement that tomato is a fruit. Most of us think of it as a vegetable. But uh, I believe it is a fruit, actually. Uh, so most of you probably would think of something like, uh, like an apple. right? So that represents the whole category. But the problem is that an apple, uh, of course, doesn't look anything like a pineapple, even though it sort of sounds like it. So people might not be able to guess that a pineapple is also a fruit from your apple example. Now, I am uh, mostly Italian, so I'll use myself as an example. And uh, my grandparents were from Italy and were very hardy people, very strong. And uh, so they are, uh, you know, let's say that I use them as my representation of Italian folks. They're hearty. And so uh, that's that's what comes to mind. Remember, it's not because I saw my grandmother last night, that would be availability, but it's because I've got this this whole notion of what Italians are like from this lengthy experience I have over the years with my grandfather and grandmother and other aunts and uncles. Okay, so uh, they represent. So if someone said to me, well, what are Italians like? I, and I would say, well, they're very hardy folks, very hardy, very strong. So that's representativeness. Another one that came up was base rate uh, fallacy or base rate neglect. So basically what this means is that when you make your decision, you do not consider any of the statistics or any of the complex data. You neglect that and you go with something a little bit more concrete, right? Like, let's say, a, a there is a connection between representativeness and 
and this one here, base rate, because I, I'm going to neglect any uh, statistics and go with maybe someone I know or some stereotype in my head. So here, here's an example. Here, here's the difference. They've done studies where uh, they might give people a piece of information, which is, okay, uh, I want to I wanna tell you that uh, in this particular college, the average GPA is 3.0 with a 0.3 standard deviation, okay, which means that 60, uh, almost 67% are between a 3.0, a 3.3, and a 2.7, right? And then it goes out another, right, if you remember the bell curve and all that. Okay, so those that's the data that you're given. I say to you, well, here's a particular uh, applicant from that college applying for a job, and, uh, you know, he happens to be a member of the chess club, a very conscientious person, and uh, he likes, uh, let's see, what does he like? He likes computers. Okay, so you, and then I say to you, well, what do you think his GPA is? Well, you're going to neglect the, the whole information I just gave you about he comes from a college with a GPA, of three, uh, the average GPA is 3.0, standard deviation is 0.3, and you're going to say something like, well, he probably, uh, chess club, uh, computers, but he's got a GPA 3.5, okay? You're guessing, and you're basing the guess on a stereotype in your head, but you're neglecting the data I just gave you, which suggests that if you're going to guess, you probably should guess 3.0. I mean, that's going to be your closest bet than something like 3.5. Next one. Let's see here. Number four, take the best heuristic. Okay. Now, this one's kind of interesting. This is where you are trying to make a decision between these two cars. And, you, just, and you know, it's just like, uh, okay, well, uh, which one gets the better uh, gas mileage? And someone says, well, this uh, the pink one here. And you go, all right, I'll take that one. So what are you doing? You are making a decision based upon one piece of information and you're not going any further than that. You're not considering any other information. It could be, for example, that it's also more poorly made and so while it's ex inexpensive to buy, it could be expensive to fix later on because it breaks down more often. The airbags uh, in the back and on the sides near the windows, the other one doesn't. So as you know, if you're trying to decide how to buy a car, it's very complicated. But one strategy is simply to bring up one cue, one criteria, ask which one is better on that criteria, and then make your decision based on that. Okay, probably not the way to go, but that's what we do because these are mental shortcuts. Okay, all right, number, that was number four. Let's move on to number five. This is called anchoring. Okay, now this one's sort of interesting, and the idea here is that if I were to ask you something you don't know, kind of a maybe a complicated question. Let's see. I'm going to bring out a car here. There we go. That, I believe that's a, well, let's just say that's a Ferrari. Looks, certainly kind of looks like one, I guess. But I don't know. You know, I've never been in a Ferrari, so I don't know. So suppose I give you a question and I say to you, but they're, they're anchoring, uh, how much do you think a car like that costs? Uh, do you think it could cost something like maybe uh, $500,000? Do you think a car like that? And uh, let's say you don't know, uh, but you might say, oh, no, I, I don't know about 500000 That does sound like a lot. May maybe 300000 would be about right, you know. However, suppose instead of starting with the 500000 I start with, let's see, three. 300000 And I say to you, oh, that looks like an expensive car. Do you suppose that costs around 300000 Now what's going to happen is the number, the suggestion that I've just given you is going to affect you. And you're going to say something like, well, I don't know, about three. Uh, uh, that could be it. Maybe it's uh, something around uh, th maybe 350 or uh, maybe 250 something like that. This number, this first suggestion that's thrown out at you, becomes an anchor. Your next guess is going to be right around the first one that you're given. Okay, so it is a way to sway people. I mean, I could say, geez, look at this car. Do you think this is uh, maybe $80,000? 
And you would say, oh, I bet you it's around 100, right? So you're going to be close to me. If I started out with $300,000, you might say, wow, that's a lot. I don't know about that much. Maybe $200,000. Number seven, overconfidence. And this is just generally what we've, uh, I think, alluded to previously and not surprising. We like to be confident about our decisions. And when we have difficult ones to make and you take essentially a guess, uh, you're probably going to think, well, I think that's right. We, it's my, you might call that a self-serving bias as well, because you, right, you, you don't want to think that you uh, have absolutely no idea. I mean, you just said something. You don't want to appear like an idiot either. So you're just likely, right, to, to be unrealistically confident about uh, what you've just said, which is related to the last one on my list called the hindsight heuristic or hindsight bias. Right? And this is the one where, looking in the past, you tend to choose the times when you're right and you forget the times that you're wrong. So, for example, suppose that the police arrive and they take one of your neighbors away for being a suspected serial killer. Now, you might say, you know, I knew there was something wrong with that guy. I just knew there were, he just was not right. And uh, someone else might remind you, uh, hey, Bill, you've, I remember you said that about that neighbor over there and uh, that neighbor over there and the one around the block. But you don't remember those times. So we don't remember the times that we're wrong. When we look behind us, we just remember the times that we believe we were right. Right. So, uh, you know, that, that's how you hear that so often when people say, oh, I, I knew there was something strange about that guy. And the fact is, you have probably said that about a lot of other people. All right, so there's your heuristics availability. You heard it last night, and it's right on your tip of your tongue, and so you say it. Representativeness, you've got a stereotype in your head, and you use that uh, to, to paint everyone you know or to believe that the, everybody is like that. Base rate neglect or base rate fallacy, that's the one where you are going to neglect any complicated data and just go with the first thing that comes into your mind, which could be either availability or it could be something you have, a stereotype you already have in your head. Take the best heuristic. You just use one criteria. You say which of these two is the better one on that particular criteria. Whoever wins, wins. Now, if they come out to be the same, and you say, well, which one gets the best gas mileage? And the two cars, if in this case you're looking at cars, they have the best gas mileage. Then you go to the next criteria, price, and whichever one's the cheapest one you go with. But it's always you take the best of the two based upon one criteria at a time. And you don't go into a more complicated uh, comparison than that. Anchoring, the first thing you hear or the first thing that you guess at becomes uh, an unavoidable anchor for you. And your next guess, even if you do go to a next guess, is always around the first one. Overconfidence, we tend to be overconfident about our guesses. And hindsight, we tend to remember the times when we are right. Okay, all right, Michael Britt here saying, see you next time on The Psych Files.